Now here's your host, Bill Teagan. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Eddie Sutton Show. A great week for the Cowboys. They've won four straight, and Coach, it all got started with a great trip to Tulsa in the Bank 4 Classic. Well, I want to take this opportunity to thank Ed Keller, president of Bank 4 in Tulsa, for hosting the Classic for the first time. I think all the people that were there saw some outstanding basketball. We just didn't have as many people as we had anticipated, but they're going to have it again next year, and I hope that we'll be able to fill maybe a center. But we, we raised a record to 5-2. and two. It started out with Appalachian State. We played them on Friday night, and then we beat uh, Texas A&M on Saturday, and then won a very, very good game against the University of Tulsa a little bit earlier in the week here in Gallagher, Iowa. We hadn't been back on our home floor but one time since this season began, other than the exhibition games. So we played very well in that game. We're going to see highlights of all those ball games uh, later in the show. you got a little momentum going now. That's got to help. Well, it does help, and uh, I think it was just great to be back in our state of Oklahoma after uh, being up in Alaska, and I think that's one reason our players played well. Still playing very inconsistent. Uh, we play excellent basketball at times, and then we go into what I call Death Valley, and, and uh, we just struggle. So hopefully we can get those things straightened out here in the next few days uh, before we really hit a tough stretch right after final exams. We've got uh, LSU and Tulsa. We go to Arizona State, and we go to Providence during uh, the latter part of December. So three really tough ball games. Well, we've got a lot of great basketball to show you. When we come back, we'll take a look at highlights from the Bank 4 Classic on the Eddie Sutton Show. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Lots of basketball to show you, so let's go to ORU's Maybe Center in the Bank 4 Classic, a great facility to play. Coach, you're going up against one of your former assistants. Tom Apke, the coach at Appalachian State, was my assistant five years at Creighton, and then when I departed to go to uh, the University of Arkansas in uh, 1984, uh, he was the, became the head coach at Creighton. Outstanding coach, got a young ball club. We were able to jam the ball in low. They did not have anyone that could defend Bryant, and uh, he led our ball club in scoring 33 points, which uh, I think tied his high. There's good defense right there. Good two-on-one break. How do you feel you played in that game? Again, obviously, Country had a great game scoring-wise, but you guys pretty well dominated this from the beginning. Well, they just didn't have anyone that could cover inside game. They uh, displayed some different defenses, and I thought our, our ball club adjusted well. Uh, we uh, turned the ball over uh, too many times in a game like this. Uh, shot free throws well for one of the few times this season, 18 out of 24, and just dominated the boards. I think that was the other thing that allowed us to, to uh, win by such a big margin. We out-rebounded 48 to 20. And you had some people step up and make some rebounds and grab some boards that normally you wouldn't think so, like Andre Owens. Well, we are always trying to uh, really impress upon our perimeter people they too must be uh, rebounders especially at the defensive end and uh, Andre uh, uh, in the, the game with Appalachian and Texas A&M and against the University of Tulsa I thought he displayed a lot of uh, maturity he is getting better he still doesn't make all the right decisions but uh, that will come there's a nice pass by Andre and, and uh, Randy Niffley uh, puts in a backhand layup Randy Our freshmen hit. played well. Scare and Nelson both played well in this game. Uh, Keani got into foul trouble and didn't get to play but uh, about nine minutes. But we did have an opportunity to play all of our, our whole squad, and uh, that's always important. And as you get into big eight play or into the stretch what I was that, that I was talking about a while ago, sometimes those uh, uh, young players are not going to get to play much, uh, much time. John Nelson with 10 points. There's country again, 33 on the night. Well, he got that on only uh, shooting 14 times. That's, uh, that's a lot of points, but he went to the line 14 times and he hit 11 field goals. He was 11 for 14 from the field and the line. And Sean has been working with uh, Bryant. And in the three games that we had, he hit 86% at the line. And he's now the leading free throw percentage in our uh, percentage shooter on the team, which he couldn't believe uh, uh, when we were getting ready to record this. I saw him over in my office and. I said, you, he says, you got to be kidding. I said, no, you're shooting about 73% uh, on the season. That's the highest percentage we have. Well, I ran into him, too, right before we taped this, and, and he's bragging about it now. He feels pretty good about that. Well, I hope he continues to uh, be able to hit those free pitches. Uh, as I told him, uh, he threw away a lot of points last year and the year before by not shooting a high percentage. 
And because he is hitting his free throws, I think he's elevated his scoring average for the season up to about 24. Nice. There's a great put back and uh, Bryant flushed it home. Good hustle play there by Randy. Came back and back tapped the ball, knocked it loose. Andre very alertly picked it up. You can see they're playing some zone here. And great uh, position on the part of John Nelson. <clears throat> when a shot's taken on one side of the floor, we're always talking about weak side board play. Get, in, get on the weak side because if a miss uh, is made there, normally the ball's going to bounce over the basket, and that's what Nelson did. Another great driving layup by Randy. You know, Randy actually struggled shooting the ball from outside in that game, but he is so valuable, does so many other things for you. Gets like nine rebounds, and he's just great hustle on defense, really played well. He has uh, really improved his game in other areas. We all know that he can shoot, but he's become a, a very, very good defender. His passing has improved. His dribbling has improved. And uh, he's just uh, an, an outstanding basketball player. The other night in our Tulsa game, there were several pro scouts there, and the way he lit it up uh, with his shooting and, and the rest of his game, I think that he's got a shot if he'll continue to work hard the remainder of the year to, to be drafted next June. And Scott Pierce yes. hitting uh, hitting a fielder. And there's Jason Scare. The thing that we all like about him, he's aggressive, he's very alert, and uh, he's always there making a play like we just saw, where he'll scoop up a loose ball and, and make a, a, a get a put back. Kevin Miles in this game went in there, and I think he only played uh, nine minutes. No, he only played four minutes. <laughs> and uh, he ended up uh, scoring uh, Eight points. Yeah, That's a lot a great, of points. The next game. night against Texas A&M, he played four minutes and made four fouls. <laughs> so just the opposite. He had a good game and a bad game. Coach, I know before the Texas A&M game on Saturday in Tulsa, you guys had a chance to, uh, as a team, visit uh, Scott Carter's memorabilia in sports. And, uh, boy, what a collection and what a fine young man he it, was. It is a marvelous uh, display, not only of Oklahoma State uh, basketball, but uh, many other uh, famous uh, athletes and there you see us uh, in bank four one of their branch uh, banks and that is moved around from different banks there in Tulsa and I think it's going to be moved around all over the state it's really uh, quite uh, uh, impressive I think anyone who uh, loves sports would like to see it and of course Scott Carter was one of us I mean mm -hmm. he was one of our family uh, he sat on that bench and uh, I've never met a young man that had uh, more courage than Scott he fought cancer for a long time and finally he passed uh, about a year ago, but he's still with us in spirit. And uh, anyone that wants to make a contribution to the American Cancer Society can can uh, make it through uh, his foundation. So, but we had a good time out there. And of course, now we're playing the Aggies. We start out a little sluggish. Bryant uh, wasn't on top of his game. He picked up three fouls early. And uh, Texas A&M. Uh, uh, I thought uh, really played well about the first 10 minutes. And then when Bryant went to the bench, uh, we learned a valuable lesson. We can play without him. And uh, we were behind when he went to the bench, and we ended up going into halftime with a nine-point lead. And him has very, very good athletes. Uh, after we had beaten them in this ball game, they went home and beat Southwest Louisiana. And you can see Tony Baroni over <laughs> the sideline. Now, he fights it. I mean, he is very, very enthusiastic about the game, and I don't think he ever sits down. But uh, they went back and won the game, and I think they'll they'll do well in the Southwest Conference this year. Talk a little bit about what it means to your players, though, to be able. You don't want to make a living playing without country in there, but if he does get into foul trouble, this has got to help the confidence of the other guys. There's a great pass by Nelson. He's uh, for a youngster. He's one of the best passers I I've seen for a big person. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's clever and Keontae uh, drives it home. Well, I think what that does when your star player uh, it goes to the bench and all of a sudden your team plays well, later in the year when we get into big A play, they, if that happens again and, and Bryant does get in foul trouble, then I think they can, can draw on that and say, hey, when we played the Aggies, we played without him and we did well. And uh, I think that's very important. I thought that was one of the, the bright things that came out of the uh, two game set over in Tulsa. Great play there defensively. One of the Aggies uh, was overplayed. He back cut to the basket, and we we were able to uh, rotate our defense and, and pick up a, a charging foul on Texas A&M. Terry stepped up, hit a couple of trays for you. Well, Terry's been playing very well. Uh, he hasn't been scoring a lot, but uh, he certainly has been playing well in other areas of the game. This ball game, Bryant, after going to the bench, came back and hit 11 out of 11 at the line, scored 21 <laughs> points to lead us. 
Randy hit 12 and Andre had 10. Uh, and Jason came off the bench and hit 14. We only had 10 turnovers in this ball game. And uh, we out-rebounded them. Didn't shoot quite as well from the field in the game with Appalachian. We shot about 54%. In this game, I think we were in the mid-40s. For the season, we're shooting about 49%. Landry fires in from long range. At halftime there, you were up 53. You were up by, uh, I think it was 19. 33-14. 33-14. Yeah, and we came out here the second half and probably played the best, old oh, 10 minutes of basketball we played all season. Defense was excellent. I think we scored on every possession, and they didn't score. They only had six points in the first mm -hmm. 10 minutes of the second stanza. There's a, a replay of that. Uh, Andre throws a lead pass to Chianti. I think he got away with a double dribble there. <laughs> you know, those guys are always complaining about the bad calls, but they always forget about the good calls that go in their favor. Coaches never do that, do they, Coach? Well, we have a tendency <laughs> to be critical of the guys in the striping church, too, at times. And when you grade the films, you find out that a high percentage of the time they made the proper call. Well, great, great spin move, move by Chianti. If we can get him down on the block, as you saw, can see in this ball game and in the Tulsa game, he's great. And that doesn't mean he doesn't play out on the perimeter, but he is really tough down there. He's so strong, quick, and it takes a real good defender to stop him. You guys just really turned up the defense in, in, in a stage here in, in this ball game with Texas A&M. I mean, it just became obvious as you watched it, it was extra intensity level. Played well at both ends. Uh, didn't turn the ball over. There's a good example of good, solid defense, and uh, we were able to convert on many of these miscues by Texas A&M. There it is. Hmm. Good enthusiasm. That's what you like to see. Great bench enthusiasm. See our guys over there standing up? Basketball is meant to be played that way. And you can see we've opened up a 30-point lead in the first uh, eight minutes of the second half. Good execution on out-of-bounds play, and Jason Scare uh, hits a free throw and completes a three-point play. You've been very successful working those inbounds plays. Well, the main thing is to get the ball inbounds, uh, but if you're fortunate to, to be able to uh, get a, a basket off of it, that's uh, even better, and we have had uh, good success with that. And Jason with 14 points, nice pass to Andre. That little guy there is quick also. He's leading our team uh, for the season in assists, and his uh, assist turnover ratio is quite good. Maybe Center's a great place to play basketball, isn't it? Wonderful place. I, I think, uh, and, you know, I love Gallagher Iba, but I wish we could uh, place some, maybe Center over here on our <laughs> campus. I, I think it's a good size and uh, just a beautiful arena, and I'm so thankful that uh, Oral Roberts University allows us to use it even when we don't play RU, ORU. You know, we play. LSU over there on December 20th. That's going to be a terrific game, and, and I hope that our students will gobble up those $9 tickets. Uh, our athletic department is letting them have them for half price, but there still are some tickets left, and we need to get over there on December 20th and fill that place and beat Dale Brown and, uh, and LSU. Well, it's back to Gallagher Iba against Tulsa. Great game. We'll be back with the highlights of that when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Gallagher Iba, what a setting, what a game against Tulsa Wednesday night. You know, Gallagher Iba is always sold out, but sometimes we have no shows, but we didn't have uh, very many uh, last Wednesday evening when we played the University of Tulsa. And I tell you, you know, Randy Rutherford sometimes can get in a zone, and I, he just, everything he throws up goes in. Our team offensively was struggling a little bit right there, and he hits the first three baskets, all threes, had five threes in the first half, 21, 24 points at halftime, ended up with 33 to tie his uh, all-time high. There's Keontae Roberts doing what we like to see him do. He's a slasher. He took that ball hard into the paint and hit about an eight-footer. Tulsa also hit some three-pointers. You know, for the game, they hit nine out of 22. What is it about Randy that makes him play so well against teams inside the state? Well, I think it's a matter of uh, pride with Randy. Uh, I told him uh, earlier today, I said, that you need to play like that against, just <laughs> pretend everybody you're playing is from Oklahoma. But, you know, he's from Broken Bow down in the southern part of the state, and he knows most of the guys that play at the University of Oklahoma and, and Tulsa. And, and I've always thought that if a young man is from plays in his home state, that uh, there's added pressure on him 
to do better, and he wants to do better. And Randy has just been terrific against the Sooners and against the University of Tulsa. Well, Bryant Reeves, a big night too, Bryant, with 29 last night. Bryant didn't shoot the ball quite as well from the field, but he was 10 out of 18 and 9 out of 11 to line, had 11 rebounds, so he had a double-double. Hit some pretty big shots down the stretch too. Well, the one thing that uh, pleased me also in this game, uh, Bryant Reeves and Randy Rutherford displayed great leadership ability in uh, bringing it. To, boy, that's a good play. <laughs> I'd like to see more of those. But uh, in, in really regrouping our guys, great pass by uh, Bryant off to uh, Keontae. Keontae had his best uh, game of the year uh, point-wise, had 19 points in this game. Played well in other areas, too. There's Randy driving to the basket. We jumped out on these guys 48 to 28, or 48 to 30, 36, 12 point lead at halftime. And our defense was very, very effective. A very, very nice uh, bounce pass by John Nelson. That's what you call give and go or a basket cut. Yeah, feeling pretty good at this stage of the game, up by 10. Well, well, we got at halftime, we blew four dead layups in the first half and missed, uh, I think, three free throws, or we could have had even a bigger lead. He's falling down and he hits that you one. You know, he did not hit a, uh, a three-pointer against Texas A&M and then came back and hit, I think, the first five he took in this <laughs> ball game, or five out of six. Bryant was much more active. That's one reason that he was able to pull down 11 rebounds. Sometimes he gets in there and he just doesn't move his feet and get position. Very, very nice uh, driving layup by Andre Owens. Uh, Andre had 11 assists in this ball game. Country just looks more confident at the free throw line, but look at that. That's a great follow. Well, we ran a, a free throw play. We stunted like he stunted football, and uh, Randy made a great play in there. He gets out in front of everybody uh, from Tulsa and, and gets an easy layup. Well, those we guys play like this all either, the time. I mean, we're looking pretty good <laughs> yeah. right there. But we did play well about the last five minutes of the first half and all oh, the first uh, eight minutes of the second half. I, we played as well as we can play. And there's a great driving layup by Jason Scary. Here it is again. He has no fear, does he? He's not afraid to take uh, a little banging around, and, and that's uh, you don't see that very often in a freshman. Well, Cordell Love lit it up from outside, too, for Tulsa. There's the Freshman mistake. Uh, he threw the ball flat, and uh, Tulsa intercepted it. Here's a good play. When Randy's driving and uh, like that, I think it really helps his game in that uh, sometimes he has a tendency just to float around the perimeter and want to shoot trays. And when he's driving, I think it just uh, really complements his game. We got up to a 25-point lead. This is a great example where you lose focus, and uh, you lose a little of your intensity, and that's not to take any away from the University of Tulsa because their young men certainly uh, played hard and, and fought their way back into this game. But you get a 25-point lead, uh, you should never let it melt away like we did. One of the reasons uh, that happened, we, we became a little impatient at the offensive end. Our defense broke down. And the biggest thing, we fouled too much. You know, you start, somebody's trying to catch you and you foul them, it stops the clock and they score points without uh, any time going off the clock. I think we got whistled in this game for 25 fouls, and they hit 31 out of 38 free throws, and that kept them in the game. And again, you guys hit some big free throws down the stretch, country hitting a couple right here, and Cowboys win it by a score of 93-88. It's a, it's a great victory, and uh, boy, you take that. Well, it's a good win because uh, I guess of all of our, uh, uh, our, our non-conference games, I should say, uh, Tulsa's probably the biggest game on, on that schedule, although we played Michigan State and Providence and Arizona State and LSU. But it, just the fact that they're, they have a quality program, they're here in our state, and uh, I hope as long as the players, the coaches, and the uh, – fans behave themselves, that series will continue. Well, hopefully so. When we come back, we're going to take an in-depth look and an unusual look at Jason Scare on the Eddie Sutton Show. Jason Scare is one of the new young faces in this year's Cowboys squad, and in her off-the-court feature, Tom Dorado found out he is very talented both on and off the court.
Most of us get so caught up in points, assists, and rebounds that occasionally we tend to overlook the many other talents that today's young people possess. Cowboy freshman Jason Scare is a perfect example. In addition to excelling on the basketball floor, Jason is also an accomplished pianist. He works as hard on the keyboard as he does on the court. Jason, when did you first become interested in music? I first became interested when my father bought my mom a piano and she started playing. I saw it as somewhat of a girl's piano to, you know, an instrument to play. But then my mom said I should take lessons and that's when I started. Was it difficult to find time for both basketball and the piano during your days in high school? Not really. When I got home from practice or I was frustrated, I used it as an outlet for my frustrations, really. You seem to approach both music and basketball with the same competitive spirit. Well, in some ways I, I think I do, but in other ways I would say that piano is more of a rela relaxation, whereas when I'm on the court it's really competitive and you're always working. Along that same line now, you appear to work as hard on the keyboard as you do on the court. In anything you do, you have to have a lot of practice to be good at it, so when I play the piano, I want to get better, just like when I'm on the court, I want to get better. You mentioned it would seem music can offer kind of a relaxing diversion when caught up in this uh, demanding world of a student athlete. Definitely. I mean, there's a lot of pressures on you when you're on the court, and now more than in high school, you have a lot of people focusing in on you, so playing the piano is definitely an outlet for your uh, frustrations or stresses. Now what advice would you have for a youngster who might doubt whether he or she can excel in both athletics and music? Well, I would just tell them to give it a try. I mean, you never know what you can do until you give it a try. So give it your best and if, you work, if it works out, then good. And if it doesn't, you can move on to something else. How did your teammates in high school look upon you when they found out that you could play the piano as well as you do? I don't think it was such a big surprise to them because I've always been uh, interested in a lot of activities. So when they found out I could play the piano, it was just like another trick in my bag, I guess you could say. Your high school years were very well-rounded. You had a lot of interest other than athletics. Uh, definitely. I, I enjoyed the performing arts. I like going to plays and seeing operas and things like that, which are kind of different, I guess, for an athlete or what the public would see would be for an athlete, but I mean there was a lot of things that I enjoyed doing and I, and I had a good time doing them. Wonderful young man, well-rounded, uh, class individual, and a real asset to Oklahoma State. Well that's our show for this week. We hope to see you next week on the Eddie Sutton Show. For Coach Sutton, I'm Bill Tegan. So long everybody.